guys, it's Craig back here for part two of the mead making series. So it's been about 10 days since I started the fermentation on the mead or the melomel because it has fruit in it. And I have some here, this is a hydrometer. And looks like we're looking at here, uh, I've already read it, so I'm just confirming. Looks like about one point, no, it's about 0 0.098. 0.098, so almost 1.000, just below. So um, it's been like that for a few days now, so I'm assuming it's done as far as this stage goes. It's fully fermented. And what I'm gonna do, um, before we move to the next steps, which is gonna be adding some more fruit and some uh, nutrient, of course we're gonna rack it into a secondary to get it off of the sediment. We're just gonna take this and put it in the glass and see what it tastes like now. Obviously, I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna pour it out. We may as well see how it's coming along. Let's give it a taste before we carry on with the next step. Jesus, not bad. Hmm. Certainly it's not infected and actually it doesn't taste too bad. Um, it's got some carbonation because it just, that's what happens. Uh, it'll have to be degassed, but um, not at this stage right now. Um, it's certainly drinkable, but it's gonna be much better once we get the rest of the procedure over and done with. Hmm. All right, well, let's have a look and see what we've got here. All right, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to siphon the mead from the primary into a secondary carboy to get it off of the sediment and we're going to add some more fruit to it and some yeast nutrient to get the yeast back going again and we should have some more fermentation happening here um, we've got some more oranges here some of them aren't peeled yet i'm actually going to get the i'm going to use one of these to get the zest off of these the outside of the uh, skin and we're going to also get those into uh, the bowl here as well all chopped up we also have some frozen raspberries two packages okay like that today we're going to use a juicer if you don't have a juicer um, you can't use it but um, so you use whatever method you feel comfortable with to get the juice out of these things last time I just squeezed it out of the oranges um, but uh, today we're going to use that you could get a towel a clean towel put this stuff in and wring it or you could just chop them up and throw them right into the uh, into the fermenter into the carboy once you get it siphoned um, and just let it float around in there I've decided to do the juice thing because it's easier and I won't have to filter it or, or uh, strain it off later on okay I have a little microplane uh, grater here um, there's different ways of zesting but what you want to do is just get the only the orange part you do not want the white part underneath which is called the pith you don't want that so just get the orange uh, bit from the outside lots of nice oils in there it's easier to do before you peel the oranges obviously okay here's where we get loud and I'll wake up the entire family <laughs> my goodness all right Okay, so what I've noticed is that there's a lot of wasted raspberry matter there. I am not going to throw that out. So the decision I've made is that I'm actually going to I'm going to put all this. It's been basically pureed. Um, it looks like a lot of it just flung up, flung up out of the blades and into this area. So I'm going to actually going to just put it all in the pot. 
and um, put that into the mead. I am not going to waste that. Okay, so I'm stirring it in. And there's our orange juice, orange, ra orange raspberry juice mixture. Mmm. All right, we're going to pour that in there. I'm going to rinse that out with a little bit of water. We're going to put in our orange zest. Let's get the heat on here. And I'm also going to, you know, I, I mean, I didn't realize how this would uh, transpire, but it turns out that the raspberries did not juice very well. They just flew out of the uh, basket. So we're just going to pour it all back in. And I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. There's all the orange. Try not to get as much of the orange, I guess, because they don't need that. Um, put all that in there. Okay, so there we have our orange raspberry mixture. And I'm going to decide to add this right into my, into my mead. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. Just a little. And uh, just to thin it out just a bit, make it easier to pour. We're going to bring this up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to pasteurize it for half an hour. And what I did was I took a little bit of that mixture and I added it to the uh, bit of mead that I put in the glass here earlier. Let's taste this and see how it tastes. It gives me a general idea how it might taste in the end. I mean, it's not going to be close to it, but it'll be just sort of a ballpark. <laughs> That's good. All right, I've uh, cooled it down for the most part in a sink full of uh, water. You can see what it looks like there. And we're going to pour it into a, my sanitized secondary carboy. And there we go. I've sanitized my auto siphon. There we go. Would you look at the color of that? Looks incredible. Wow. It smells absolutely amazing as well. Um, so I have really, I'm really excited about this. I have very high hopes. I have a hydrometer sample here of it. Um, before we did this procedure, we had 0 0.998. Now we have 1.004. So we've gained a tiny bit of fermentability of sugar. Let's taste this and see what we got here. It's pretty interesting. It's actually not bad. It won't be this sweet when I, when it's finished fermenting. So in the end, we're going to end up, if I get better than this, I'm going to be very, very pleased because this is actually not too bad. Well, 
I'm double fisted again. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> cheers guys. And uh, stay tuned. A little bit of fruit in there. Stay tuned and uh, in about a month we'll do the follow up for this. In the meantime, I'll drink my baby mead or melomel. Cheers. All right, so while that's happening, uh, pasteurizing there, I'm going to go downstairs and uh, sanitize my carboy, my siphoning equipment, my funnel and all that, so that we can uh, get on with this and, uh, I don't know, let it sit for five years and, I don't know, just... <sighs> I have a hydrometer set. So we, great, we gain just a tiny bit of fermentil fermentability, eh, f off.